Hello there, good afternoon. One in 50 British fathers could be unknowingly bringing up another man's child. Uh, a child that uh, in their heart and in their life is theirs, but biologically, genetically is not theirs. Which also means that one in 50 women, if this is the case, one in 50 women have told a whopper of a lie or are keeping a whopper of a secret from their partner. I've no idea how you could live with that, but uh, clearly people do and always will have throughout history, I'm sure. Um, do you think that compulsory paternity tests at birth are, are the answer to this? Or sometimes is that secret well worth keeping and does nobody any harm? Also between now and four, we'll have more on the story of a Northern Irish woman who was given a suspended prison sentence for aborting her baby. Uh, first, though, this question of paternity tests, compulsory paternity tests, um, so that every man knows whether the child that he is being asked to raise with his partner is indeed his or not. This uh, new study suggests that one in 50 men are raising a child unwittingly that isn't theirs biologically. Um, I said this will have gone on throughout history for one reason or another. But do you do you have experience of this in your life? If you are a woman keeping that secret, I'd love to hear from you. You don't need to give your real name or, or, or say where you are. Um, how do you keep that secret? I, I can't conceive of how you could keep that secret or, or live with that uh, lie at the centre of your life for the rest of your life and the child's life. Um, it, what is it like to keep that secret? Or if you're a father who discovered that the child wasn't yours or suspected that the child wasn't yours, how did you live with that? 0345 6060973 is the number to call. You can text 84850 or tweet at LBC. And as I said, if you don't want to give your real name, you absolutely don't have to. Uh, Mike Buchanan joins me, leader of the Justice for Men and Boys Party. And uh, Anna Smydor is here as well, medical ethicist and lecturer at the University of East Anglia. Um, Mike, first of all, are you in favour of the idea of uh, mandatory paternity tests at birth? We are indeed, Sheila. And in fact, it was in our 2015 uh, general election manifesto. Just before we start, Sheila, I wonder if I could just mention that my political party will be hosting the second international conference on men's issues at Excel London from the 8th to 10th of, 8th to 10th of July. We'll have 20 speakers, five of them women, and people are coming from 16 countries. So thank, thanks, thanks for the plug. OK, well, you did your own, but there you go. Yeah, you've done it now. That's fine. What, what, what do you think the value is in these mandatory paternity tests? So you picture the scene, you say, oh, Mr. and Mrs. Jones, it's a boy. Congratulations. Mr. Jones, a moment. We need to take some blood or a, a swab, a saliva sample so we can check the child is yours. How do you manage this? Well, how do you manage it? I mean, I mean, the first thing I should say, Sheila, is that, you know, I haven't seen the report that suggests it's one in 50 children being brought up by somebody not, not their biological father. I, um, my, my, I mean, there's something that, that we research a lot, and my, my hunch would be is the, the true figure is probably between 10 and 20 percent of children are, are, um, are, are being raised by a man who, un, who thinks he's a biological father but, 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 but isn't. Um, it, it's an incredible assault on the human rights of men, but also the children who, 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 are, who are led to believe that the man is their father when, 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 when it isn't. It's, it's uh, you know, and it's, you know, it, it's also, you know, people tend to forget that, that, the, that, you know, there are two types of paternity fraud. Uh, the first is a, that we're talking about here is a criminal offence under the Fraud Act 2006. Um, but but, but um, women are simply not prosecuted for it. It's, 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 it's appalling. It's just one of many areas. Where, where, where women are not held responsible by the criminal justice system. Let me bring in Anna Smido onto this. Do you believe it is as Mike describes, Anna? Um, I think it's a very um, heavy-handed and draconian suggestion, and I think it's very intrusive as well, the idea that at the point of birth uh, all babies are paternity tested. And I think it's representative of a, a kind of overvaluing that we tend to do as a society in placing all this emphasis on genetic relationships above others. And I think the, the reason that we're able to even think of this as being fraud is only because we place so much value on that. I mean, uh, I have been brought up by a stepfather, and um, so clearly, you know, I see the value of, of non-genetic relationships. But can I ask? Can I ask you, Mike? Are you, you you're not doing down the value of those fathers, are you? you you're just saying that the of original lie is the offence. It, it, it is the offence, and um, I'm, I'm surprised to hear a medical ethicist come out with those sentiments. It's basically uh, valuing at zero men's human rights. 
And it's also valued at zero, the, the, the right of a child to know who his or her biological father is. So when Anna says we're, we're too uh, focused on the, the genetics of, of our lives, you disagree wholeheartedly, do you? Well, yes, I'm, as I said, because it, it's just, you know, it is it's basically saying that men's human rights count nothing. We, we have in our election manifesto 20 areas where the human rights of men and boys in this country today are being assaulted by the state's actions and inactions, usually to advantage women and girls. There's not one area, Sheila, today in Britain where the human rights of women and girls specifically are being assaulted by the state. I mean, you know, men, men as, as far as the state is concerned and the criminal justice system, men are close to subhuman. Um, 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 and we know, for example, that um, if men were sentenced as leniently as women by the courts, Five out of six, uh, five out of six men in British prisons today wouldn't be there. I want to keep it onto the, on this subject rather than the broader sure, subjects sure. that I know your party looks into. I want to keep it onto this question of paternity tests. How practicable do you think it? I mean, clearly the test could be done. It's not that it would be a difficult thing to achieve, but I, 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 I certainly wouldn't go for it. I, I, I would regard that as offensive if they said, "And now we're going to check that your husband really is the father of your child." I'd say, "No, you're not. Do one." Well, um, you know, there's two competing things here, Sheila, aren't there? There's, there's the fact that you'd find it offensive and the fact that um, had you been unfaithful to your partner and, and, and had someone else's child, um, you know, I think he, he, sh- he should know how to, he sh- you know, he, sh- he should be informed of that. Yeah, yeah but, but the point is the state shouldn't intervene just to check whether I'm a criminal liar or not. Of course it should. I no, mean, no, it, no, 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 no. What, what? On a daily basis or from, from a point of zero? You know, our, our starting well, no, point well, is... No, no, you, what, what you're she, talking... She, 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 no, you're talking about paternity... No, let me finish. You, you're talking about paternity tests for everybody, not just for people where there's yes. a doubt in their relationship, for yeah. everybody. Of course, because at the end of the day, most of the... You know, in most of the cases of paternity fraud, uh, this type of paternity fraud, by definition, the man that trusts the woman... When, when and, and that trust is misplaced, so he spends twenty years, probably f- um, you know fi- uh, financing a child's upbringing, and very often paying paying for for you know for you know for the for the for the woman as well. Um, no, right, you know, but I, I understand that I understand that those no, Mike, I understand that those situations yeah. arise, of course, and I agree with you that I think I think it is a woeful, a woeful thing to do to a person. I agree with you. But what I don't agree with you about is that every woman, when she gives birth, should then have somebody testing her partner to see if that man is the father of her child. I think that intrudes into private life. Well, then how do we bring about an end to this form of paternity fraud? I mean, given that you've agreed that it's an appalling, it's an appalling assault on men, how yeah. do we bring an end to I, it? I think, I think, I think murder is an appalling crime. I don't expect to be investigated for it on a weekly basis. I'm sorry, Sheila, I missed the beginning of that. I think murder is an appalling crime. I think theft is an appalling crime. I don't expect the state to randomly, routinely check whether I am one or not. Well, that's because, you know, you, you're, you're clearly not putting any value whatsoever on, 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 on the men who, who are... No, but I clearly are, am, because I've just it. told you I agree with you that it's an offence. I just think we're, we're on two different tracks about what the solution is. Mike, you've had a lot of time. I want to hear more from Anna now. Thank you, Mike. Mike, you t- Mike Buchanan, very much in favour of compulsory paternity tests. Anna, that question of the genetics of this, um, a lot of people will hear you say that, that, that we're too focused on genetics and think, damn right, we are. That There are genes. It's our history. Well, I think, um, of course, genes are an important part in, in what makes our understanding uh, of, of what, what is the parent-child relationship, but I don't think it's the only thing, and I don't think it's even necessarily the most important thing. And we have to bear in mind that up until relatively recently, we didn't even know what genes were. People did manage to, to have families and to love their children without conceiving, sorry for the pun, of, of that relationship as essentially a genetic one. And I think, um, although I, I agree that there is something wrong in a relationship where lies are being told, But I think um, when a a man and a woman decide to raise a child together, the issue should not be whose genes are in this child, but are we together prepared to raise this child and to love the child? Um, And surely that's the most important question. Well, it, it, it it is the most important second question, Anna, because the first question has to be, 
about the truth, doesn't it? The, you know, it, I, I, agree, I couldn't agree more with you about the, the importance of two people, fo- you know, focusing on a child and raising that child. Of course, that's important. But if at the heart of that decision is a lie, it's a very different proposition. I think it's only a lie if you've already made the assumption that the primary important aspect of the relationship is a genetic one. So it's possible to envisage a situation where people just aren't particularly thinking about genes at all. They're thinking, uh, my partner's pregnant, we're going to have a child, we're going to raise it. That's what's important. Yes, but it, oh, but come on, you're being a little bit disingenuous here, Anna, because if, if, if a man is told by his partner that she's pregnant, his assumption is that the child is his. Mostly his assumption is the child is his. What you're saying is a, 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 a beautiful scenario you're describing is a couple where they know that one that one part isn't genetically related to the child, but but they're going to raise it lovingly anyway and they've reached an agreement and everybody's telling the truth and that's fine. Those examples where someone isn't telling the truth. Of course the genetic history matters to the man. I would say that the reason the genetic history matters in that situation and not in the other is because of a moral breakdown in their relationship. And so it's not so much that the man is raising a child that isn't genetically his, which happens all the time. It's that he's living with a liar. Lots of men are happy about it, but it's that they're in a bad relationship where they they don't trust each other uh, and where they're not able to, to, to have a, a healthy um, communication. And I think that's not necessarily going to be fixed by imposing a, a new draconian law that forces these um, genetic paternity tests at the point of birth. That is not going to fix these damaged relationships. Anna, thank you. Anna Smidal, a medical ethicist at the uh, University of East Anglia and we heard as well from Mike Buchanan, leader of the Justice for Men and Boys Party. Now he is uh, in support of mandatory paternity tests at birth. I'm not. Anna's clearly not. How about you? If you've been in this situation where you found out that you were bringing up a child that wasn't genetically yours, uh, what was that experience like? What did it do to your relationship? And if you're a woman keeping that secret, how do you keep that secret? 0345 6060973 is the number to call. You can text 84850 or tweet at LBC. It's 3.15. This conversation on LBC. If you go to lbc.co.uk, you can see the full new weekend lineup at LBC. As soon as I uh, looked at this story and wanted to talk about it today, I knew we would get loads and loads of calls. The question of whether there should be mandatory paternity tests for everyone at birth, because uh, new research suggesting that one in 50 men is raising a child that isn't genetically theirs. We heard from Mike Buchanan, leader of the Justice for Men and Boys Party. They very much support mandatory paternity tests. He thinks the figure is much higher than that. Uh, if you've got experience of this in your own life, do call. Some of you are already, uh, but don't uh, feel you have to give your real name. You can keep your anonymity if you wish. 0345 973 is the number to call. You can text 84850 or tweet at LBC, Jason's call from Northfield. Hello, Jason. Hi. Um, the, the, your previous caller, lady, is a beautiful sentiment, but being a child that was told, or adult that was told at 21 that uh, my father wasn't my father, I would be sort of in favour of the, sort of the, the test across the board for all children, parents, families, to, to, to ensure that that, that that lie doesn't sort of manifest itself anywhere else. Do you think mandatory tests would make it harder for women to lie about who well, the father course. was? If you, if you knew before you got pregnant that at the point of birth you're going to be tested and anything that you haven't told will be uncovered, I think you would definitely think twice because at the moment, unfortunately, it's a thought that it, it, it's very unlikely to be, it's an lie that's very unlikely to be uncovered unless there's some really, really drastic um, you know, uh, 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 things that happen during, during the birth, maybe that requires some more more investigation. But other than that, the majority of births go 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 on go on quite well, and babies are born, and then that's it. There there isn't any other questions. Tell me about tell me about your experience, Jason. You were twenty one when you found out. Who told you, and why did it come up? It it, it came up because I I had compass, I had questions regarding. My, who I thought to be my biological father and things that had happened in the past and because I wasn't prepared to let the questions lie. Why did you have doubts I, about him? I, just in the differences between myself and my brother, the way that we processed things, the way that we did things, it was so 
fundamentally different that I couldn't understand why 